Hello friends, today we are on week three of our 52 week journey through Jack's Seek and Find paintings. Today we're going to look at one that many of you have probably never seen. Uh, it's entitled, In the Beginning. This was an interesting painting to watch Jack paint. I remember seeing it sketched out on the canvas. The original is four feet tall and three feet wide. I was in Jack's studio and uh, he showed me this sketch that he was working on, told me a little about it, and the next day at church, someone asked me if I thought Jack would maybe do a little sketch for the next Sunday's Sanctity of Life Sunday. And I told him about his sketch, but I said, oh, but he just doesn't have time. If only he had a little bit more time. But would you believe he painted the entire painting in a week and our son Jeremiah was able to uh, photograph it and create bulletins that we were able to use the next Sunday. God works in mysterious ways. So I wanted to show you this painting this week because uh, we are actually observing Sanctity of Life this month in January. It is a Sunday when we highlight the incredible value of every life, the very youngest unborn to the most elderly, and all people of every race, status, and position, the rich and the poor. If there was ever a message to share, it's that God loves people. He values life. In fact, let's look at the painting. You see the hands of Christ? Notice the nail prints? Several verses came to Jack's mind while painting it. One was the very first book in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's in Genesis 1.1. Jack wanted to convey several things. One is our memory verse for the week. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Colossians 1.16. He created all things, including each one of us. And according to Colossians 1.17, even now he's holding all things together. Now, I don't want to get too far off on a tangent, but according to my very limited research, scientists can't fully explain uh, the protons that exist inside an atom and what happens when they are under certain conditions, an atom is split. Well, but the result I understand is the atomic bomb. So what if Christ is holding all things, including the atoms together? And what happens if he lets go? Perhaps 2 Peter 3.10 has the answer, and I'll read it for you. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. I've said all this to say, thank you, Jesus, for holding all things together. And to each of you, please be ready for the Lord's return by asking him into your heart today. Now back to the painting. The unborn baby represents each of us as our new life comes into existence. We all started out this way. We are a masterpiece of God. Psalms 139 tells us that we are knit together in our mother's wombs. I don't know about you, but I think God must be a pretty good knitter <laughs> in order to create each one of us with different looks, different voices, different fingerprints, and different DNA. He made you just the way you are. He loves you and he has a purpose for your life. Now, let's look back at the painting. Sadly, some lives are cut short and returned to their maker. Though our Heavenly Father assures us in Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
God knows each one of us, no matter how long we live. When our daughter Sarah saw the painting for the first time, she commented on how much she appreciated the image of Christ praying. And Jack was a little surprised because he hadn't intentionally put that in the painting. She pointed out the shadow on his left hand. Do you see it? Immediately, Jack thought of the high priestly prayer of Christ in John 17. I pray also for those who will believe in me. That's us. And you know what? Jesus is praying for us today. Think about that. When you feel like there is no hope, Jesus is praying for you. When you feel like you can't go on, Jesus is praying for you. When you worry over the past or you fear the future or you're fighting an addiction or uh, whatever it is that makes you unable to sleep at night, Jesus is praying for you. So, can you find Jesus in the painting? <laughs> Don't worry if you can't find it right away. I remember the first time Jack showed me the original. He asked if I could find Jesus. It took me three days, and he didn't give me any help at all. I'm going to be kinder. I'm going to give you a little hint. I'll let you know that you aren't looking for an image, but the name Jesus. Jesus. The name above all names. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. We are living in perilous times. It's tough. But hopefully remembering that in the beginning, God had a plan and it included me and you. He wants us to know him and to know that someday he will come back and we will go to live with him in a wonderful place called heaven. Won't you trust him today? Surrender your life to him and ask him to lead you in his plan for your life.